Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today time for a fun video, at least it is for me. Time for a top. We didn't do one of these in a long time. But anyway, today I thought I would share with you my top 5 favorite Phalaenopsis Complex Hybrid Orchids patterns. And before we get into the top, let me explain what exactly it is because the title would have been a kilometer long. I am only going to refer to the color patterns that I like the most out of all of the Phalaenopsis orchids that I owned so far. It just so happens that I recently purchased a few that I always, always wanted. And because it's Phalaenopsis blooming season, I can actually show you some of my current ones that I actually really adore. So I will not be referring here to fragrance or display or how it blooms, you know, multiple branches and so on. It's purely the pattern, the veining, coloration and pretty much how it looks like. And of course, only with complex hybrids, I will now refer here to species or primary hybrids or simple hybrids such as the Leodoro, just your typical uh, flower shop garden center phalaenopsis. And with that said, let's start the top. On number 5, it is a Phalaenopsis which I sadly sadly don't have anymore. I'm looking for it, hopefully one day I'll find it, but I do have footage of it from the past. And this is a Phalaenopsis New World Hybrid. I call it like that because it looks very 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 similar to a, I think, simple hybrid Phalaenopsis or closer to species. But my Phalaenopsis, even though the flowers looked almost identical, it was a big girl. It had a big leaf span and also a tall flower spike. Flower-wise though, and coloring and pattern is almost identical. So look at that beauty. I cannot even describe how this orchid is. Yes, it has a sort of a yellow flower, goldeny flower, but the pattern on it is just so hard to describe. Dots and lines displayed in circles around the lip. It's just beautiful. It adds so much dimension that sometimes I felt the flower was a little bit 3D, even though it wasn't. Um, the patterning on it is simply breathtaking and even though the orchid herself was really hard to maintain in the sense that it had very very big leaves and tall flower spikes, it was absolutely worth it. I personally don't really go for very big phalaenopsis with big big flowers, but that pattern, oh my. I happened to stumble upon this orchid in a garden center or a flower shop purely, purely by luck and I think they brought it once again and my friend at the time bought it but ever since then I've never seen it for sale in flower shops or garden centers. It's just my impression that it's kind of rare, which makes me slightly sad because any prospect of having this orchid again in any shape or form is kind of slim but I'm still hoping. Just for the record, this orchid is not fragrant, at least the hybrid that I had, but anyway, with that pattern, I don't think it matters. But anyway, that was number five on our list. Sadly, we had to start with something that I don't own anymore. And PS, yes, I lost it to spider mites. I didn't really know how to treat them at the time, and I don't really remember if I gave it away and it died in the care of the person who I gave it to, which sucked. A lot of Phalaenopsis died that way, but all of them died because of the spider mite infestation, which I didn't know how to control. But now I do, and as a side note, if you're struggling with it, check the description down below. I'll I'll share with you my current DIY homemade receipt that actually works and it saved all of my collection. On number four we have two Picati orchids. So I just grouped them together because they have the word Picati in their name. I like them both the same because they have one trait that is common and this is, well, the Picati on the edges. Picati is a term that applies to other plants as far as I know which have an edge of a different color and with our orchids here you can see where the inspiration came from. I also like to call these brush strokes phalaenopsis and there is another one with pink that I don't have but since I just purchased this one I thought well let's make this video right. So down below let's start with this one. This is the pirate Picati the non-peloric version. This is one that I got last year from Max and finally it bloomed. But I also have the peloric version of it, which I purchased last year. Sadly though, I broke the flower spike. So I'm not sure how many flowers we'll have from that one this year, but hey. The Pirate Picati is a complex hybrid, which is a pretty big girl. It produces a long flower spike and it also has a peloric version, which I personally prefer a little bit more. I'm not necessarily a fan of peloric orchids generally over the normal ones, but when it comes to the Pirate Picati, it's just so, so beautiful. Very nice Peloria traits on that one. So the Pirate's Picati, again, is a non-fragrant orchid, which is big, it will take up a lot of space, and the flowers 
are kind of big as well. They're not the most immense, if we're thinking about the single oh, but you know what I mean. So it does put on a great, great show, don't expect the fragrance, but do expect it to take up a lot of space. Above it, we have one that goes under many names, but only one registered name. So I first learned about this orchid under the name of Bee Sting. And you will find this orchid under this name, not sure at what shops though. There's also the name Papagayo, which it sounds to me like parrot, because in my language, Papagayo means parrot, so maybe that was the intent of the name. But this is not the registered name either. The registered name is Phalaenopsis Chiara or Ciara Francis, variety pink. A tea. If you look on the RHS register, you will find, I think, a hundred Ciara and a name. So I'm not entirely sure about the other hybrids, but the creator did a whole batch of Ciaras and then a human name, which I find very interesting, but I cannot say I know any other of these hybrids. I do, however, know the Ciara Francis, and it's just beautiful. Look at that contrast. You know me, I'm a person of contrast. We have a beautiful golden background with nice red kind of margins and a bright purple lip that actually is a sort of a red purple. It looks absolutely beautiful. There is no fragrance once again, and it is a big orchid. All of these orchids, with the exception of one, I think, they're big orchids. The flowers are a little tinier on this one, as you can see, so I would call her a medium-sized flower. However, the downside with this particular one is that this color fades dramatically in time. I have this orchid for about a week, and I do presume that the flowers opened a few weeks ago. They still maintain their color, but I think you can already see it's fading away. When it opens, it's very bright, but then as time goes by, it really, really fades. So that's a pity because Phalaenopsis orchids can stay in bloom for a lot of time, um, but this one will lose its beautiful and bright color. However, though, for the first few weeks, I think it's worth it. It's a beautiful Phalaenopsis that I always, always wanted to have together with the Pirates Picatee. I finally have them, I'm happy to have them, and pattern and color-wise, they are on the fourth position for me. Alrighty, number three, slightly hard to film, so I'll just have to get you in closer and make some B-rolls because I cannot really fit her into a good frame. From one spike to the other, I think she's 50 centimeters long, so that's a lot of orchid. Alrighty, on number three, we have the Phalaenopsis Chinguri's Gold Staff. Not sure if I butchered the name, but that's what she is. I purchased this one last year. And if you remember, she is the one which I received with oily leaves. And let's just make a little update. She created a new crown. It's actually a keiki, which managed to make its way to the crown. And it just looks like it has a new crown, but you can see slightly distorted growth right there. Anyway, I purchased a Phalaenopsis from eBay. That says something. I really, really like this orchid. Unlike the other orchids, this one is a tiny flowered one, as you can see. But the orchid herself is not tiny. There are Phalaenopsis which are big but have tiny flowers. So you have to think if the space occupied is worth the flowers. And in my case, with this orchid, I am totally okay with it. I find the flowers very, very attractive. One of the problems we have with Phalaenopsis complex hybrids is that the flowers are pretty pale, fluffy-like and fragile, and whenever we see Phalaenopsis with more sturdy flowers, waxy flowers, in a more pronounced or saturated color, I think we're all very excited about it. And the gold staff is one of those orchids which you absolutely cannot pass. It has a beautiful golden orange yellow background behind really pronounced purple veining. Because of the background, they look a little bit red. The colors mix a little bit and it just makes for this overall wonderful orangey-like display which just warms my heart. I am a fan of orange. And even though the veins are actually purple, they just look red. The lip is purple, but that's okay because as you can see, it's a sort of gradient from red to orange to purple. I find this orchid to be very, very charming and the pattern is just straight up my alley. It really doesn't matter that the flowers are tiny. And just as a side note, the display is great as well. This orchid seems to branch quite a bit and furthermore, it is also slightly fragrant. Actually, firstly purchased this orchid because it was fragrant, then I was slightly disappointed by the fragrance. It is slightly citrusy, yes, but it just smells like grass to me, grass and dust, actually. For number three, I absolutely adore this orchid. Display is nice, fragrance might be a bonus for some, not necessarily for me, but the pattern is just wonderful. 
On the second position, no surprise here, maybe for some of you, the Phalaenopsis Mini Mark. To this day, I did not encounter an orchid with such a beautiful orange and white contrast. The Mini Mark is the only, only one that I personally owned and came in contact with. So as you can see, this is a medium-sized Phalaenopsis. We're not dealing with big humongous orchids anymore, at least for the second position, which has very tiny little flowers. But that pattern and that coloring, it's just so unique. And I know unique doesn't really have comparative terms, but I'm calling it as such because it is breathtaking. The Mini Mark is a very popular hybrid actually in collections and I owned a Mini Mark ever since I can remember. I'm still not over it, I'm still fascinated by it and to this day as I was saying I did not encounter a more contrasty or similar pattern. The fact that the flowers are so tiny doesn't bother me at all and what I like the most is the combo. Yes, the pattern is beautiful as well, you have a contrasting lip on a white background and that just hits the mark for me but also on the sepals and petals you can see a lot of dotting now these dots vary a little bit in color some of them are orange some of them are a little purple but overall they don't really seem like orange or purple but if you look at the lip you can see the dotting continues so the dots are actually not orange they just seem that way the shape of the flower i find it to be perfect that is my absolute favorite shape for a flower waxiness is perfect it looks like a species but it's not and about the orange on the lip well it's the perfect orange you cannot say it's reddish orange or purple purpley orange or I don't know something of the sort it's pure orange like the peel of an orange and that to me is unique I've never encountered this color on a Phalaenopsis hybrid not gonna go into the species so of course this has to be up there in my top I absolutely adore the pattern and the coloring but it would be so great if I could encounter a fragrant mini mark because they exist however though it's not the point of this video the point is to observe the pattern and and to me, this is absolutely unique. Not as unique as the number one position, but overall worth having. You should find this orchid at nurseries, but also flower shops and garden centers. The price is not big for it. And it's a very, very good bloomer. It produces a lot of branches, a lot of flower spikes, if you take good care of it. So it is a massive bloomer, even though the flowers are not big. And it blooms every spring or every late winter, let's say, just like the other Phalaenopsis orchids. It's not like a species. You can absolutely take care of it in a home. And on the number one position is an orchid that has no ID. Yep, it was bound to happen. I don't know the ID of this one just yet. Maybe I'll find it out. So this is a Phalaenopsis complex hybrid that has issues transferring its colors to the camera. On the camera it appears very purpley for whatever reason, but in reality it's not all that purpley. It's more of a burgundy, reddish purple and with some yellow spots here and there. Anyway, this orchid has been on my list for a lot, a lot of time, even though I don't know the ID. My orchid friend Cora got something very, very similar a lot of years ago. And everybody was jealous of her, to be frank, on that forum, including I. Well, I was jealous in the good way, in the sense that I was really admiring her orchid. Now, this orchid, I don't know if it's exactly the same one. It doesn't really appear to be, but it's very, very, very similar. I really, really like Picotty edging and dots of the kind. I cannot say I like Harlequin Phalaenopsis, to be fully honest with you, but I do enjoy uh, little tiny dots and all sorts of patterns that just looks like somebody embroidered it there. Remember my mini Phalaenopsis? My favorite one was one with the edge. The same concept applies. I love edged patterns for whatever reason and this coloration is just beautiful, even though it doesn't really look that way on the camera. I can actually try to do something. Uh, the background will be a little different and that's because I added a different white balance, but I think this is more appropriate to how it looks like in reality, although I had to adjust my camera. Being that these two orchids are very, very similar, although they don't look identical, makes me think that this might just be a glitch. Maybe it's not a variety of its own, maybe it's a glitch, and maybe it's not even registered, which would be a shame. But also, it makes it interesting because whenever you visit flower shops or garden centers, you always hope to find something special and 99% of the times it doesn't happen, 
but every once in a while you get a jewel like this and sometimes it might actually be something unique to you and that's quite a unique feeling although I would actually much rather prefer this to be a variety anyway so not much to say about the orchid it is a complex hybrid and the flowers are medium to large for a complex hybrid and to me this is the most beautiful hybrid that i can think of at the moment so alrighty guys this has been the video for today let me know down below if you enjoy my tops because i have an entire database now i can do my favorites and not so favorites maybe tops it's a fun video for me to create and if it inspires you or shows you orchids that you didn't know about that would be fantastic so do let me know down below in a comment if you like these types of videos and as for today you know the drill if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video i learned this as a poem and sometimes i get stuck Alrighty then i'll see you all next time bye